Hey there, my name is Gardner, your friendly neighborhood developer advocate with Linode. With over 100 million players across the globe, Minecraft is one of the most popular multiplayer games of all time. And while there is a first party solution and a few other hosted solutions uh, for running your own Minecraft server, none of them offer the same flexibility as running your own Lin Minecraft server on Linode. So let's go ahead and review how to actually get Minecraft set up on a Linode. It's a really simple process uh, and all you need to do is follow along with this video and you'll be up and running in no time. Before we get started though, make sure you hit that like button. It really helps us out here on the channel. I mean, if you like what we're doing here, if you are enjoying this kind of content, share this video with your friends and make sure you hit that like button. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing that you're gonna need is actually a Linode account. If you don't have one, uh, look in the description, you'll find a link to get some free credit for Linode to get you started. So once you have your Linode account set up, let's go to cloud.linode.com. And once we're here, we're gonna go over to Marketplace here on the left. And then we're going to uh, select Minecraft Java Edition right here. Once we've selected that, we can scroll down. Now, this actually has more settings than any other uh, uh, one-click app than, than we've reviewed before, but that's okay. Um, most of them are optional and have same defaults. So we're gonna go over all of them and if you see an option here that you actually want to enable then uh, you or disable for that matter, you can just follow along and, and find the one when, when you're setting up your end. So the first thing is going to be the name of our world. Let's just say Gardener's World. This can be anything you'd like. Next thing is going to be message of the day. Uh, this field is going to be displayed to everyone who logs into your server. Um, and uh, powered by Linode, I think is pretty awesome. So we'll keep it. Now flight enabled won't affect uh, your creative mode flight. This is going to affect uh, mods that have flight ability. Uh, I'm gonna say false, that's fine. Um, nether world enabled, we'll say true. Uh, the nether world is an interesting area, but if you don't want the nether, we can hit false. So with player achievements enabled, uh, it's actually going to show any achievement that any player earns to everyone who's logged into the server. Uh, I find those kind of annoying, so I'm gonna hit false. Maximum players. Now, 25 players is actually gonna be uh, a little much for the specifications we're gonna be running at. So I'm gonna say 15, and we'll, we'll talk about the specifications you need uh, a little bit later. Uh, player idle timeout is the number of minutes before a player is kicked for being idle. Um, we'll just choose, uh, let's choose 15 minutes. Uh, difficulty level, easy, medium, hard, peaceful. Uh, peaceful is going to not spawn mobs and, uh, you know, easy, medium, and hard is pretty self-explanatory. Hardcore mode uh, is actually gonna set the entire difficulty to hard, and then once a player dies, they're actually only allowed to rejoin the server as a spectator. I'm gonna leave that false. PVP means that players can attack each other. I'll leave that to true. Force game mode enabled uh, will force the, uh, the player to join the server uh, at the default game mode. So if the server's default game mode is creative, then all players will spawn in as creative mode and you know, survival will be survival regardless of how they last signed out. Uh, world type default, uh, flat and legacy. These are the types of world that get generated. Uh, I'm just gonna go with default. You can add a world seed here if you want to have, uh, if you want to use a specific seed for the procedural generation of Minecraft. Spawn animals, uh, spawn monsters, and spawn NPCs are all pretty self-explanatory. It's going to uh, enable those types of monsters. Default game mode, survival is going to be you need to eat to survive. Creative is more like uh, first-person Lego. Adventure means you can't destroy blocks and just have to like go through the world uh, and find your way through the world without destroying blocks or anything like that. And spectator is uh, not being able to interact with anything really. Uh, we'll just st stick with survival. Structure generation, we'll leave to true. That's gonna create uh, the, the kind of procedurally generated structures that you find throughout most of the game in Minecraft. Maximum build height is pretty self-explanatory. It's uh, how high the player can actually build. Maximum world size, uh, we'll leave that to the default. Now view distance uh, is going to show how many, uh, how much of the world the player can actually see uh, when they connect to the server. Command block enabled. Um, let's go with true. Command blocks are a useful item uh, that allow you to add like logic to certain blocks. I'm gonna let that be true. Querying enabled means that you can use uh, GameSpy4 uh, queries to get information about your server. Let's leave that to true. Uh, enable Archon is uh, remote console access. Uh, we'll set that to true. 
uh, Archon password. We're going to choose a uh, unique password here. Maximum tick time is the uh, maximum number of milliseconds that can elapse between uh, two ticks, not even frames, but ticks. Uh, so logic updates, basically. Network compression threshold is the number of bytes before a packet is compressed. Uh, op permission level is going to be the default permission level given to players when you use the slash op command to assign operators. Uh, the port number is going to be the port number that you use to connect to the game. Snooper enabled allows uh, telemetry to be sent to the Minecraft home server. I'm going to set that to false. And use native transport uh, enabled. I'll set that to true. That just basically optimizes the server. Well, you know, uh, it took a little bit, but we got through that. Uh, that, was, that was relatively painless, right? <laughs> now, like I said, I didn't adjust many of those options. Most of those are gonna be pretty sane defaults. Uh, you might wanna adjust one or two things here, depending on the kind of game you wanna run. But now that we're done with the, with the Minecraft specific options, let's go down uh, a little bit further down the page and uh, set up some of the more uh, Linode oriented items. Uh, region here. So region is going to be where your uh, server is actually running. I'm going to choose Newark, New Jersey because I'm in the Northeast United States. And you really want to have your Linode location as near to your players as possible. Um, that's just to reduce network latency and such. Uh, let's scroll down a little bit more. We're going to go to our Linode plan. Now let's talk about the kind of plan that you need in order to run uh, Minecraft optimally. Uh, the Linode documentation specifies that you should actually have uh, two gigabytes for every 15 players that you anticipate having in your server. So if you're going to have 15 players, you would need a two gigabyte Linode. If you're gonna have 30 players, you would want a four gigabyte Linode and so forth. Now you'll remember uh, uh, earlier, I specified 15 players maximum. And so that's because I anticipated using a two gigabyte Linode. Okay, let's scroll down here. Let's let's give our Linode a name. Um, Gardener's Minecraft Server. And this name has to be unique for your Linode account. So if you have, if I already had a Linode server that was called Gardener's Minecraft Server, this wouldn't work, but it'll work for now. Um, let's go ahead and select a tag. These are optional. And finally, let's go ahead and just select a password. Now this is going to be the root password for the Linode that you're creating. Um, finally, there's options here for adding SSH keys or enabling backups or anything like that. We don't need to do any of that. We'll just go ahead and hit create. Now it'll take a while for your Linode to provision. Uh, while we wait, you can also head over here, uh, to grab your IP address. Uh, we're going to copy that IP address to our clipboard. And if you're using do, uh, the Linode domain manager, you can head over to domains and you'll want to click on the, the domain name that you want to use here. So let's do that. I'm going to use linodians.net. You can see there's a few other configurations here that I don't actually need anymore. I'm just going to clean these up real fast. Now I could set my a record uh, for linodians.net to be the IP address of this account, but I'm actually going to use a, uh, subdomain. So we're going to say Minecraft. And then, uh, so this will be minecraft.linodians.net. And then we're going to add our IP address here and time to live. We can leave as default and hit save. Now this will, will allow us to actually type in minecraft.linodians.net right into the Minecraft client and, uh, be able to connect to our server without having to type in our IP address. Cause who's going to remember an IP address. Okay, so it looks like our Linode actually has finished provisioning. So we're gonna go ahead and sign in. All right, so we're logged in here and uh, looks like we've got the latest version. Now I'm on Linux, of course. Um, that's, who, that's who I am, that's how I be. Uh, so we're actually booting up Minecraft here and we're gonna go to multiplayer and we're actually gonna add a direct connection. And let's go ahead and here we're going to uh, say minecraft.linodians.net. And yeah, it's really that simple. Now I'm all logged in here. Uh, we have a uh, Minecraft setup running on our remote server and uh, we've connected to it. Now, I'm already logged in. I think that this is super nifty. Now, if you actually want to make yourself a mod, uh, you're actually going to have to go uh, and log into the Linode. So let's do that real fast. We'll leave Minecraft open in the background, but we're going to go back here. We're going to go to the Lish console. We're going to type in 
our username, which is root, and the password that we specified, which is the last field that we filled out uh, before we hit create. Uh, now we're logged in. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do is actually CD to home, MC server, and then server files. And then we're gonna want to nano uh, ops.json. And we're just gonna add our Minecraft username in quotes like this. And if you wanna specify other people, you just add a, a, com a comma and then add another username between quotes. But um, that should suffice. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. I had a lot of fun. I'm really interested to hear what you guys think about uh, running your own server on Linode. Uh, let me know down in the comments. We, we really appreciate, we read every comment you guys send us. So uh, thank you so much for uh, being here, for watching this video, for taking the time to spend some time with me today. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one.